Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, The Planted Carly Flower. I'm Carly, and what you are looking at is the future site of my new Millsbo wide form greenhouse. I have this little pop-up tent here right now that currently has my Florida ghost and my baby Billy Tie in there. And that's what I use to quarantine new plants, give them humidity and warmth while they're acclimating and recovering from their journey. That will be moved. This is all the supplies for my cabinet, except for these. Those are mattress protectors for my kids, which will also be moved. And this is where it's going to go. Um, I cannot wait to show you the process. We're going to get into that in just a moment. The cabinet is due to get here in about 45 minutes. You're going to have to excuse my absolutely filthy room. But I want to give you a lay of the land before the cabinet arrives. So again, this is where it's going to go. Directly across from where it's going to go is a southern window. Then over here is another southern window. And then on this side of the room, these are eastern windows. There's one there. And one there. So this window and this window are going to play into a big part of the light. Um, of course, I will also have grow lights. But it gets a fairly decent amount of light. You can see the shadows. It gets pretty bright in direct light, even more so in the summer. So it's going to be in a great place. It stays nice and warm up here in general anyways. But it's going to be great, and I can't wait to share it with you. So let's go ahead and get into the build. Okay, the boxes finally arrived. Here they are, and now we are going to unbox them and put them together. I want to be daring, baby, dance the night away. I let my head down if I want. Don't you just get tired chasing fame and being pretty all the time? Doesn't sound like fun. You can do better Let me show you what a good time looks like You can do better So much better mm -hmm. I don't fit So we've got everything separated out Those are the doors All the hardware is separated and categorized how we need it The sides and the legs Trash We just bought my kids all three of them new mattresses, new pillows. So those are the boxes for the new mattresses. That's the floor of the greenhouse and the glass shelves and sides. And I always say, take care of your kids first by greenhouse is second. So obviously the kids got their rooms done first. They got new beds, they got new or mattresses, new pillows, new sheets. They got a whole new bedroom makeover for the room. So I am doing this with what I had left over and I really am going to enjoy the greenhouse hopefully as much as they're enjoying their new beds but yeah we're going to get started um assembling now that we've got everything separated and make sure we have everything we need to do it you definitely don't want to go through half of the cabinet build and realize you're missing a piece that did happen to me on the first mills bowl I bought I was missing a piece that I kind of needed. I was thankfully able to find something in my garage that made it work. But this time we got a complete hardware pack and we are good to go. So yeah, time to build. I'll check in when we got some of it up. Okay, so this is the base all put together and the two pieces that we're gonna drill holes through sit on top of this. So the next step is to drill the holes and put the bottom completely together. I want let yourself be free and maybe you will find that there is more to 
now comes the point in the build where we have to drill the holes for all the cords. You want to make sure you're drilling in the back so that the cords are not visible from the front. So this is the front with this lip here and you want to drill in the back. Some people only drill holes on one side. I like a hole on both so I can have fans on either side of the cabinet and not have to run the cord across. Sometimes the cords for the fan are too short for that. I found that out the hard way last time when we had to drill a second hole after the cabinet was built and that was a pain in the ass. So make sure you're drilling in the back and I, I personally drill two holes. So we're gonna do that now. One more thing, the bottom legs come in on the cabinet. So you wanna make sure you're drilling the hole where you're not gonna interact with the leg of the cabinet. You can't drill it right up against the back of the cabinet or right into the corner. You gotta make sure you miss that part, that lip for the leg. So definitely make sure you forget you miss that or you could drill into your leg there. And I don't know what that would do to the stability of the cabinet, but it's just something you don't wanna do. So this is the drill bit that we use to drill the holes. I just searched um, the metal drill bit on Amazon and this is what came up. We used this for the other cabinet and it worked very well, um, made the holes. Um, it's not an easy process to drill the holes through the metal. It's actually our worst part of it, um, the part we dread the most. But this drill bit did get it done and I will link it in the description box down below along with everything else that I use. Um, but yeah, this is the drill bit that we use for the holes, if my camera will focus. And it's by Lennox, L-E-N-O-X, and again, I'll, I'll link it in the description box. Like them being pretty, honey, let's just face it. You can do better, let me show you what a good time looks like. You can do better, so much better. This is the metal piece that we drilled out. Yeah. You can see it's a pretty jagged cut and there's really no way to change that. Um, I use plastic grommets like for a desk to put in the holes to make it look a little nicer and then I tape over those but you'll see that in the build a little later. Okay, so now both holes are drilled and we've vacuumed up all the shavings from the metal and it's time to continue. We've got the corner stands up and now we're going to put on the other bottom piece, I believe. Yes, the other bottom piece will be going on. And you'll see what I mean when I say we have to drill four holes. Okay, this is this is the second bottom piece that goes on top of the piece we just drilled into. So we're gonna put that on now and you'll be able to see exactly how that fits together. And that's how it fits right on top. 
And now, as you can see, we are going to have to drill through this to get the cords through. That's why I said you have to drill four holes. I know it's kind of confusing until you see this part, but you have to drill through this piece. I'm not 100% sure why it's set up like that, but it is. So, unfortunately, we just have to work with what we got. So we're going to attach this, because if you don't attach it, it shakes all over the place and screws up your hole. And then we'll drill the holes in. So we've measured out where the leg is, and we are just going to drill right on the intersection of those two lines. And that's how we end up missing the leg. We line it up with where the leg starts, and we just drill at the intersection. These are one and a half inch holes that we're doing. I'm sorry, these are two inch holes that we're drilling. Two inch holes. So we've gotten one started. I'm not going to record the drilling of the other two holes simply because you've already seen it and I don't want to be too repetitive. And also the noise is horrendous, so I don't want to put you through that again either. So just so you know, we're going to drill another hole here and another hole on the other corner. And I'll show you when we're done. Unplug the drill for me, Mom. Okay, we took a short break and we drilled all four holes. So now that the hardest part is over, we can continue building the cabinets. Now we're going to put the glass walls up and the shelf in and the doors on. And I will show you what that looks like here in a minute. So we got the middle support up for the back and we're just sliding the glass panes in for the back of the cabinet now. And yeah, they just slide right in. Just sliding in the second panel. It's kind of hard to see since obviously it's glass, but you can kind of see it coming down here. And there's the second pane in for the back. Once you get the holes drilled, it's a pretty simple process after that. It's mostly just screws and sliding glass in and then you gotta put the top on and the doors and not so bad. And there goes the last side piece. So now all the glass is in for the surroundings of the cabinet, the sides and the back. All that's left is to put the top and the doors on. He's just making sure it's lined up perfectly. And basically the main structure of the cabinet is together. All the glass is in, um, the sides and the back support. And at this point, we're just going to stick the top on. The top is secured and screwed down. You just screw into those little holes up there on all four corners and attach it. So now all that's left is to do the doors and put the shelf in. So that will be our next step. And then I can start setting it up as a greenhouse. This is a long process. So thanks for sticking with me so far. We don't need money. We can skip that part. All I want is her to be with me She's got a ticket to my heart
The sky is blue, I got the sun in my eyes It can't get better than when she makes that smile Yeah, she's got that style that makes you think she's made out of gold She's turning up the volume on the radio I do have to move my little pop-up greenhouse somewhere. We'll figure that out later. But this is where it's at, this is where it's gonna go, and now we have to set it up as a greenhouse. Okay guys, it is a new day. Yesterday it got way too late to continue. I had no more light left, it was like 9.30 at night. So, we are going to continue this today. Here's the cabinet. I'm going to clean off everything from around it, and we're going to set it up as a greenhouse. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to clear the first thing I'm going to clear away is um, my pop-up grow tent. I use this, and I've started using this recently. Um, I saw Gusty's plants on YouTube um, use this for his plants, and I use it to um, acclimate and quarantine new plants to my collection that uh, might have travelers or pests. This is my new uh, baby uh, Billy Tie. So cute. And my Florida Ghost, which I'm very excited about. It did travel with one really bad leaf, so that they're obviously going to lose that. But the other two are looking beautiful, and I got this from Bungalow Greens. She is local to my state, and I love it. And I just use my diffuser in here for now until I can get a little humidifier uh, and a heat mat. But this is all going to go bye bye We're going to get rid of this so we can get full access to the cabinet. So that is cleared away. And now we just have the greenhouse to focus on. And let's go ahead and go through the items we're going to be putting in our greenhouse today. Okay guys, I got you on the handheld tripod and I use the Barina T5 um, grow lights. Um, I had originally intended to use the T8s in my first build, but I was told by several people that had done this and used the T8s that they were a little too strong and they were getting some burning on their plants. So we're definitely not gonna want that. This is, is supposed to be a safe haven for the plants and not a place for them to burn. So we are gonna go with the T5s. If I can open them, that is. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna use the T5s and we will be using all four of the strips. I did get a four pack. There is a strip pack that has six, but um, I just got four because that's all I need. So that's how they come, and we will be attaching these with something kind of special. I know a lot of people use magnets, some people use um, Gorilla Glue, double-sided tape. This is what I use. I use the Command Velcro picture hanging strips specifically for the bathroom. They're water resistant, they're humidity resistant, they hold up to 16 pounds, and I've not had a 
millimeter of movement on my lights in my other greenhouse and my other greenhouse routinely sits between 80 to 95 percent humidity and these work perfect i use these to attach my fans and i use them to attach the lights which is why i have like 75 packs of them <laughs> but i you can't beat them they're like five bucks for a pack of four pairs and beautiful love them highly highly recommend this is my smart strip. This is going to allow me to plug everything in and control it with my phone or my Alexa. So that's really cool. I highly recommend this. It works really, really well. And it's by GoSund. And this will actually power everything in my greenhouse. Um, this is just an extender for the wall so I can still plug in my fan and my TV and have the power strip plugged in. That's optional depending on your situation. These are the grommets. Uh, the grommets are what I use to, um, they're like for a desk, and I use them to fill in the holes and give it a more polished look. Unfortunately, they didn't have white, but there's going to be plants in there anyway, so you're not even going to be able to see these. But it's just so uh, the cords can feed in, not touch that um, sharp metal, and just give it a more polished look for whatever plants aren't in there. It's just my, for my own personal aesthetics. They're cheap, they're, the cords feed through, and I do feel like they hold in some of the humidity better than just big old open holes. So that's nice. This is the weather stripping that I use for the doors. Um, it's the foam fluffy kind. I will be tagging everything in the description box down below, so don't worry. Just go down there into the description box and click a link. I also do have a highlight on my Instagram showing pictures of everything I used in the first build and I'm literally using everything the same that I used in the first Mills book cabinet. Um, I loved the way it came out so um, I do get a meter for both the top and the bottom shelves. Um, do, they do tend to vary a little bit uh, so I have a meter for both. It comes in a two pack and it's like 20 bucks I believe. Um, again link in the description box down below. And what is in here? Oh, these are my fans. I had to get black ones this time. My other fans, the other fans are white and yellow, um, but they did not have white, so I got black. Hey, it'll match the grommets, no big deal. And um, this is a heat mat. I do put heat mats in there in the winter. Um, I think I'm only gonna put one on the top shelf currently. Um, or or the bottom shelf, I haven't decided. I'm not, I think I'm only gonna put one in there um, for propagations especially to grow um, good roots and whatnot because it does stay really warm in my room upstairs you know how he travels um, up so I think I'm only gonna do one right now um, but we'll see that might change um, again my fans and then some people put a little um, this is where I go a little different <laughs> than most builds um, some people put little um, water fountains like water features to keep the humidity up some just put rocks of pebbles of pebble trays in there uh, some use um, little humidifiers, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> I get a little cat fountain. You know, they have, they have those little fountains that pets drink out of? That's what I use. The reason I use that is I don't ever have to fill this up really. When I water, I just top it off a little bit and the water just runs. It stays clean. It's, it works really well. And I literally only top it off. Um, once a week when I water in the cabinet and it's I don't have to turn it off and on every day it just runs and it keeps the thing nice and humid like I said my other cabinet is sitting somewhere between 80 percent and 95 percent just depending on the time of day and what's going on if I recently watered or whatever and my plants are going absolutely bonkers so I didn't see the need to change it I will be using another cat fountain so let's go ahead and get you guys back on the tripod so that you can see the inside of the cabinet and we'll start setting this up. Okay guys, I hope that you can see this pretty well. Um, we're gonna have to do some adjustments if not, but we are gonna start, let's see, what should we start with? Let's start with hanging our first fan. So we're gonna hang up our first fan and we are going to use the command strips for the bathroom. I think I'm going to do one fan on each side, so let's start with the first one. I'm going to see if I can adjust you so that you can see the top of the cabinet here. Boom. Okay, so 
I know I'm off camera right now. You're not seeing what I'm doing, but I'm just opening up the command Velcro strips. Nothing exciting or nothing that you wouldn't have seen before. And we're going to open our fan. I really should have gotten like a knife or something to open all this stuff with or opened it all up before I started filming. But no one ever said I was smart. Okay, so I'm just opening the fan. Oh, wait, I lie. They did have white. Why do I remember buying blue or black? Anyway, so we do have white fans. Zeus came to say hi. No, Zeus, you're stepping on all my stuff. Thank you. And I think I'm just going to attach it right here. So that's what we're going to do. Let me see if I can. Let's see if I can aim you down for a moment. Okay, so. I got the Velcro strip here. I just folded them on top of each other so that they're already together. And I'm gonna pull off the protection on the sticky part. And on the top of the fan, I'm going to just press and hold. And I'm gonna count to probably at 20. Okay, so that's good. And now I'm just gonna take off the other side of the sticky and we're good to stick it wherever we want and i'm gonna put it here lift you up again so you can see there we go um i did do it at a slight angle just so it'll kind of come towards the other end at an angle but that's it so that's that's that there the fan is stuck to the top, and again, these have been in my other cabinet for months with absolutely no issue. And now I'm just gonna feed the cord through the grommet, the desk grommet, and then feed the cord down through the hole. Okay, so there's that. Fan installed. Um, the next thing I am going to do is open up my my strip. I wish they had had a white one just so it would have hidden better under the cabinet, but we do with what we got. Not everything is always going to be perfect. I wish it was, but so there we go. I'm going to take off all the protective strip. And this is going to go under the cabinet. I don't know if I can. Oh, I can tilt it down that far. Okay, so we're going to take the fan cord. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm just sticking it because this, this, um, this has USB ports. So I'm, the fan is a USB fan. It's actually meant for a desk to be plugged into a computer. So I'm just going to stick the fan in one of the USB ports. Simple as that. And the button to turn the fans on is on the back of the fan. Okay. So there is that fan installed. I will keep pushing on it periodically just to make sure that it stays. Okay, what else? What else can we do next? We can go ahead and get the cat fountain going. I can't do the other fan until the shelf is installed. Um, I was initially gonna not put a shelf on this and just do a big, huge open cabinet. But none of the plants I have require a big open cabinet currently. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a shelf in and run it just like my other one for now. And then when plants start getting really big, I will go ahead and take the shelf out. Um, I already have plans to get a third cabinet at some point, nothing I'm gonna do tomorrow, but I will be getting a third Mills bow soon, um, within the year, I'd say. So this is the cat fountain. And it's actually really easy to put together. Um, we've got all of our filters and pieces and then you take the lid off and all the other stuff is in here. Um, I keep this, um, not for the cat fountain, but to clean out my propagation um, cylinders and tubes that I have. So 
multi-purpose. And this is the flower petal that comes up out the top, which you'll see in a minute. And in here is the pump that is going to um, bring the water in and out. And we're just going to go ahead and put this all together. I am going to take a glance at the instructions simply because I want to make sure I'm doing this right. So I'm going to go ahead and put this together off camera and I will come back so that we can install it together. Okay guys, the cat fountain is put together. It is fed through the grommet here and the cord is plugged into my little surge protector. And now I'm just going to fill it up with water. And there is a meter on the front. You can see the, the meter here that tells me how full it is. It's got a minimum and a maximum. And like I said, if I top this off once a week, I'm good to go. That doesn't really take it about halfway, but that's all the water I have and I'll fill it up more later, but it is ready to be active and good to go. So there's that. Um, next, let's go ahead and open up our heating mat. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the heating mat on the lower level. Um, I use this B and Link heat mat in this size. I like this particular heat mat because it does tend to come nice and flat. I've had some other, some other ones come and they've been really lumpy and nothing will sit flat on them and it, it throws everything off. But this brand that I got, I've noticed is much more um, flat. You can see how flat it is. Move these. There we go. And it will take a minute to like completely flatten out. This closer to the edge. And this is where the heat mat will go. And I'm going to put propagations and plants that I just want to get a little bit more uh, warmth to their roots, like my. Billetai and my Florida ghost that I just showed you that I just got here and are acclimating to Lekka. Um, so we're going to put it right there. So let me go ahead and open up the cord. And this is the first thing we're going to feed through the other end since this is the side that the cord is on. And it is now fed through the grommet on the other side. And I'm going to probably get it as close as I can to the grommet there just so I have less cord like bugging me in the cabinet. So there it is, nice and flat and ready to be used. This I will actually plug into the wall. I won't plug it into the surge protector, or not the surge protector. Um, I won't plug it into my uh, Alexa power port because this I don't need to turn off and on. I want it on all the time. So I'm just gonna plug it into the wall and you save the other plugs for things I do want to control like the lights. So that will get plugged into the wall at some point. Um, let's see, I think this is all I need on the bottom level. Um, we need to start doing the lights. So we can do the lights on the top before I put the shelf in. And basically these are the lights. They're actually very pretty. Um, a couple things I learned from my last build, I do want to make sure that these on off switches are facing out of the cabinet because it's a pain in the butt if they're not visible for you to tell if they're on or off. And I always want to lay out how my lights are going to go before I actually put them in the cabinet. I do like to stagger them and I have to remember that my fans will be in here. So this one I'll put here like this and then I'll put the other one more this way so that they're boom boom like they're alternating and then the bottom part with the shelf I'll do the opposite way so that everywhere gets the same amount of coverage and this will make more sense later when you see me do it so I have my lights make sure my switch is facing out and I'm going to also attach these with the command strips for the bathroom 
So I just take my strip and I fold it on itself and crunch it down so that they're stuck to each other. And I pull one end off. And I'm going to stick it to the lights. Now I know a lot of these will tell you to clean the surface with alcohol before you stick it to the surface. Um, you probably should do that. Don't don't be like me. Follow instructions. But in all honesty, I, I, I've never done that. And they've always just stuck fine. Um, but it is recommended to clean the surface that you're sticking it to with um, al rubbing alcohol to sanitize the area. Get on any fingerprints or anything that might make the sticky part less... Uh, sticky and now I'm going to stick this one to the side. I like to make sure that the little tabs to remove them are facing out because if they're facing in you obviously when it's installed you can't grab those little tabs. Okay so that's that. I have the velcros attached to either end of the lights and now I'm just going to pull this part off and stick it to the cabinet. So pull it off Pull it off. Let's tilt you up so you can see. And I'm gonna stick this to the cabinet. I'm so sorry that there's not like the best light right now. But I'm just gonna hold each side for you now a few seconds. Get it nice and stuck. The other side. Nice and stuck. And we have one strip of lights installed. It's literally that easy. Um, you do want to, these are relay lights, so they must be plugged into each other to work. So I'm just going to pull some, they, this, this package of lights sends you like everything. They send you zip ties if you want to zip tie to a wire shelf. Um, they send you hooks if you want to drill through and use hooks to hang the lights. They send you everything. So this install that I'm doing isn't the only install that you absolutely have to use. Okay, let's see here. Where are my connectors? Okay, so this is the connecting part and it's going to connect the two lights to each other. See how that works? So I'm just going to... Sorry about that little break, guys. My battery died. I had to switch you out to a new battery so that you can continue watching. Anywho, brand new battery. We should be good to go. Anyway, so it was like I was saying, you have to attach these to the two lights so that uh, they can run power off each other. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. They also send you in here somewhere plugs for the ends that you are not using um, a plug-in or a wire in. So I'm just going to stick this in here like so. So that is ready for the next set of lights. Hope I'm not making you motion sick yet. Here's the other set of lights. Locate your power button, because again, you want that um, facing out for ease of use. I'm going to stick this one off of this one like this, so I want it like that. Boom. Always plan it out before you stick, because once you stick it on there, you're kind of stuck like that unless you have unlimited command strips. And I'm going to stick my first one on here. And this is the part where I have to open a new pack of command strips. down on itself. Pull off one end of the protection for the sticky part and stick it on there. I know this is going really in depth. I really hope this isn't like way too boring and repetitive, but I didn't see any Millsbow builds really where they went into really good depth. Um, a lot of them were just like, um, 
here's my cabinet, let me go over what I did, and you didn't actually get to see any of it, like it was already built. So I thought this would be useful to actually see someone put it together. I hope that's the case. And I'm just taking off the protective covering off the other side of the, of the command strips. Okay, now I'm gonna tilt you back up. Okay, and I'm gonna stick it on here. Um, I like doing it this way for a couple different reasons. One, I can put plants here underneath or here underneath, and they're not directly under the grow lights. So if you have a plant that doesn't necessarily want that direct, direct light, you have some space where there's no light that you can um, use. Okay, I went ahead and connected the wire off camera just because I would be in front of the camera doing it anyway, but they are connected to each other. And on this side over here, I will connect another wire that will run down under the glass shelf that will be here and will connect to the lights on the bottom. So I'm going to need to stick a, another cable in this light. And I will get you close-ups of everything I'm doing so that you can see that. go in the lights and then I'm going to feed it around the fan so it's not in the way of the fan and it has a more streamlined look okay so there's that okay and now we're going to have to put the shelf in so that I can attach to the other lights. Okay guys, so the shelf is in, here's the shelf here, and now we are gonna attach the other lights to the bottom of the shelf. Um, I did go ahead and run my cords um, between the two pieces of glass, the shelf and the wall, and yeah, let's get to it. Let's go ahead and install the sticky stuff on the other set of lights. So, get our command strips, fold it in, and stick to the lights. Again, making sure your power button is facing out. Trust me, that just makes life so much easier. It seems like such a small thing, but I had ended up taking them down because sometimes I wanted to turn certain lights off or whatever. Um, if a plant had just been neem oiled or, or it was in direct sun and I didn't want the grow light and the sun. And it's just so much easier if you're able to um, tell where those switches are than up there fumbling for them. It's just a, a convenience thing. If you're not worried about it, then totally optional to concern. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the relay thing over here. Let me move you up so you can see. And I'm sorry for all the noise, my dog has decided to run up and down the stairs 17 times. So you're going to hear him jingling, but I'm going to plug it into this relay cord here. Nice and tight, and then I'm going to take off the protective covering to the command strip on both of them. And I'm going to stick it on. And the glass is nice because you can tell if it's sticking evenly or not. And stick, stick, stick. So you can see that they're stuck on there. I hope you can see anyway because I can't see what you see right now. Okay guys, excuse the noise, but I did get the fans going, so the fans are working. Um, I like to leave them on the third setting because I feel like that gives me the most airflow. Um, but if you get these fans, you can play with them and do what you want. I just need to get the packing tape so I can tape this to the top and that'll be good. So that's only temporary. Well, let's go over what we've done so far in a little bit more detail. Um, I got my heat mat. It is running through the grommet over here underneath the cabinet and it will be plugged in to the, um, outlet extender over there. 
my uh, water fountain is ready to go and working. It's halfway full, a little bit more than halfway full of water, ready to go, and it's running through this grommet along with um, one fan and the light switch. Um, this fan is running through this grommet. Everything is plugged in down here. I got both fans. I've got my lights and I've got my water fountain. I did already go ahead and set this up to my phone to work. So they, so they are ready to go. They're already set up to my phone. I don't have anything in this outlet just yet. Um, my other cabinet, I did set up the upper and the lower lights separate because um, it does come with the set of lights does come with two um, plugs. But I wanted to plug it all into one and see how that works for me. I find very rarely do I have to have the lights turned off separately. Um, so let's go ahead and just go with one plug right now. Um, so we can go ahead and see how that will work. Um, if I set this all up correctly, the water fountain and the lights should turn on when I hit the proper buttons. This is a, attached to nothing, so I have the lights here. So let's see if I hit it and if the lights go on. And let's try this again. Up, oh, and there goes the lights. Lights are on. I can control this with Alexa or with my phone simply by telling Alexa to turn off or on the lights. Off, on, cool. Now let's check out the water fountain. Let's see if that works. So I'm gonna hit the water fountain button here and see if the water fountain goes on. Let's go ahead and turn the lights off so you can see this better. So water fountain. There it goes. It is good, it is working, absolutely awesome. So now my, fan, my fa water fountain and my lights are set up to work from my phone. I will set up timers, you can schedule you can do a schedule on here to have them turn off and on at certain times. Um, the water fountain I do leave on at all times, as well as the heat mat and the fans. Um, the lights I will turn on um, in, from probably about 7 a.m. till about 9 p.m. And I'll see how that works so far. Um, let's go with the lights. I do have a little plug on this side so that it's not an open connection, as you can see that. And they are attached with the command strips, power button facing out. And I just run it along, connect it there to the other lights. I'm sorry for the noise of the fans, if you can hear those. Then this goes down behind the shelf and attaches to this light. And it just runs across. Again, that will be pulled up with packing tape and taped to the, to the shelf, to this light, and then this light plugs into the outlet. So it's just basically like running a giant string of Christmas tree lights. They plug into each other, and then one plug goes into the outlet. So yeah, next step is weatherproofing or weather stripping, and it's super easy. So let's go ahead and get into that. Okay guys, weather stripping is actually very easy. So I'm going to show you how I do one strip and then I'll do the rest of it off of camera. But again, this is the weather stripping that I use. I will link it in the description box down below. Let's go ahead and open it up. And basically it's just big foam strips of weather stripping. It's got its own adhesive. This is what it looks like. It's got its own adhesive. And I tend to separate the two strings and just use one. So, I separate it like that. So I just have one strip of weather stripping. The back has the sticky stuff. And then I'm just gonna measure it across the top, cut off one long strip and stick it to that. And that will be stri weather stripped. It's, it's super simple. I know a lot of people tried to use the plastic, um, like flappy uh, weather stripping, but I only use that between the doors. So, just gonna, from here, to here, and I'm going to use my knife here to cut it. Super simple. And then I'm going to take off the sticky stuff and stick it on.
unfortunately they did not have white, which is what I wanted. But this will work. I'm gonna just press it down a little bit. And it's good to go. And the top is weather stripped. So you can see that it's weather stripped up there. Now I'm just gonna do that all along the sides and the bottom and I will be back when that is done. All right guys, so I have the weather stripping set up all the way around and it goes down and then along the bottom. I did leave spaces for the magnets down at the bottom and then all the way around the sides. Now I wish it wasn't gray, but honestly it doesn't bother me that much. I might have to cut some spots in between on top for the top magnets, but it might be okay since the bottom magnets are still attached and I can lock the door. But yeah, so that's the weather stripping around the doors with the foam weather stripping. Um, it works really well. I haven't had any issues. So there's that. Now the next thing and final thing that we have to do to weather strip our cabinet is weather strip the actual seal of the doors. And for that I do use um, flat weather stripping. It's this stuff and it's by 3M. Again, I will link it in the description box down below. And I do seal both doors. And I will show you that process. Let me get this all set up a little bit better and I will get right back with you. Okay guys, so here's the door, and I went ahead and measured two strips of the weatherproofing tape. Now you have to measure each door separately, because remember one door has the lock on the bottom, so they're not going to be the exact same length. But you want to put it on like this, so that the clear flap is on the outside of the door, if that makes sense. And I will give you close-ups of all of this. So I'm going to do one strip, I'll do the other strip off camera, and then I'll show you close-ups. So I just press it down really good so that it sticks really well. And we're good to go there. So I'm going to do the other door and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so the weather stripping is on. You can see how it's on the door all the way to the bottom on this one. And then on the other door, I have it on all the way till just above the lock mechanism. So the way it works is this door will close and it will remain, oh, sorry guys, let me get over here. And it will remain flat inside the cabinet. When this door closes, it's gonna bend. See how it bends and it creates that seal I will have to cut right here so the latch can get through. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so I just placed a little slit. So now when it closes, it can still latch shut. See how that works? Now it can't be opened. And it is a very airtight seal, guys, all the way around. I think I am gonna have to cut for the magnets up at the top here to get them more flush. So let me go ahead and do that. So I did place little cuts where these magnets will go so that they can attach to the wall. And there we go. Everything looks good. We are ready to put plants in, ladies and gentlemen. Alexa, turn on my bedroom greenhouse lights. I can control it with my Alexa and with my phone from anywhere. This is gonna be awesome, just like my downstairs one. But this is it, guys, this is the build. I just have to put packing tape on that one cord and I can put plants in here, it's good to go. The fans are going, water features rocking and rolling. I do have to plug in my, um, I had to move my dresser a little bit um, to get this to move, to fit, but we plug in my heating mat and there we go.
it's done you guys all i have to do is put plants in it it's good to go thank you so much for joining me for this uh build of my mills bow greenhouse my second one i hope this was understandable to everybody i know it's kind of choppy and this is my first time recording anything like this but I really had a lot of fun putting it together with you guys. If you have any questions or any concerns or any tips or tricks that you've tried or have seen others try that you think might help me, please let me know in the description down or in the comments down below. Um, I will make a video of a tour of both of my Millsbow greenhouses um, once I figure out what exactly I'm putting in here and I get it all set up. Uh, a lot of people have asked me for a Hoya tour, and that's basically what my Millsbow cabinets will be. Most of my Hoyas are going to be in the cabinets. I do have some on my Hoya desk and on the walls in my living room. But this is pretty much it, and once I fill it up, I will definitely do a tour for you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video.